And uh, good morning, Warriors. It's Wednesday. We are live from the quarantine zones, Coach Josh. And we have a speed strength workout for you today and uh, a story about everyday superheroes. And uh, this story is from 2014. And um, I don't know if you uh, pay attention to those kinds of, of, of news stories, but this is, was a woman um, named Lauren. She's with her two kids. She's at the beach in uh, New South Wales in Australia. And she hears uh, a mother's fervent cry for help. And she's very attuned to that. She looks around and she sees there's a mom on the beach kind of freaking out. And then there's two kids that are being pulled out into the ocean. There's two little kids. And, um, you know, immediately Lauren being a mom that like, gets uh, fired up and wants to help, she sort of hesitates and looks around to see if anybody's gonna run to the rescue and no one does. So Lauren runs down there and jumps in the water. And the reason why Lauren was hesitating was because she was eight months pregnant with her own child and she was, wasn't certain about how strong a swimmer she was gonna be in this state. But uh, there's no one else that showed up. So she paddled out there uh, into the water and these two boys, they were around four or five years old, I can't remember how old they were, they were pretty small. So she picks them up and gets them out of the water and is, uh, isn't able to swim that way with the, with the kids up there and uh, she's trying to figure out how to uh, keep their heads above water and then paddle back to the shore and obviously she's getting battered around by the ocean. She battles the, the ocean with these kids for two, three, four minutes and then Luckily, a, another stranger, a, a younger guy, had swum out there to help them and then was able to grab uh, one of the kids from her and they take the, the kids back to the, uh, to the shore. And uh, Lauren, uh, Lauren insists that the, that, that young man was the real hero there, but I think everybody who shows up for somebody else is, uh, is, is doing something pretty heroic. She ended up having her third baby, Mila, about 26 days after this event. So uh, she's got a, a really great you know, story uh, to tell her, her new daughter. But um, I, like this, I like this story as a representation of uh, Familia, and that's a big part of Training for Warriors. You've been a part of us. Uh, you've been working with us for any amount of time. You know that we are like a family, and it doesn't necessarily mean by blood, although obviously it does. It, it also means unconditional positive regard that you have for another human being. And that's, that's how we are at Training for Warriors. Those are some of our values. And um, clearly, you know, that's a, that goes beyond the, the walls of the dojo. And, and for people around the world, there's lots of people like Lauren who, who feel the same way, like it's the right thing to do to take care of people. And uh, just from what I've seen on everybody's uh, Facebook feeds and, and everybody's uh, uh, social media, there's a lot of that going around where people are finding ways to, to take care of people and living out that familia. And so uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate the, um, the spirit and uh, have a lot of gratitude for each and every one of you who continue to show up for yourselves and somebody else. And uh, to that end, let's, uh, let's do some stretches for ourselves. We're going to do a mobility flow and then we're going to do a speed strength, strength workout. So today, if you've got a light set of dumbbells or if you have a light kettlebell, that would be ideal. Uh, I've got a light kettlebell here, but I'll also tell you how to do it with some dumbbells. So just FYI. And then we're going to get on the ground for some mobility. And we're going to start by sitting. And we're going to do a, uh, a shin box kick through. So I'm sitting upright. My right knee is forward. I'm creating this sort of box pattern with my shins where it's 90 degree here, 90 degree here. My belly button is pointed out over that lead knee. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my back leg up off the ground, lock out that leg, come out, bring it all the way back, trying not to lean over as much as I can and set it down again. So I'm going to lift, lock, rotate, Come all the way back, set it down. We're gonna do one more just for good measure, just to get that hip warmed up. If you feel a cramp on your TFL, if you feel a cramp in your hip when you do this, that's okay. That just means that that TFL is tight. And when you activate a tight muscle, it wants to cramp because, and we're switching sides now, because the brain says that muscle's already contracted. 
And uh, so it wants to cramp when you activate it, but it's actually good for it. It gets to re redefine a movement pattern. We're going to take that belly button, push it out over the lead leg. And I'm going to lift that back leg, lock it out, all the way forward, all the way back, set it down, lifted it up, locking it out, coming back. Again, I'm not in a hurry. If you need to use the floor, push off the ground, that's okay. We're gonna go three times. Forward, that leg is locked, setting it down, excellent. So we're gonna go from there ugh, to the fire hydrant. So I'm on all fours and I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna pause here. And when I pause, I want the knee, the ankle, and the hip at the same height coming back down. I'm just gonna pause for one second. It's not gonna be a long time. I'm just emphasizing that action of getting that knee all the way up there. So I'm gonna go 10 times on the right. Elbows locked. Keeping those arms straight. Six. Seven, eight, all the way up there. You might feel this in your abs, adductors, but that was 10. I'm gonna go to the other side now. Elbow straight, knee and ankle, hip at the same height. Coming back down. Oh yes. The elbow wants to bend so that you don't have to use that hip as much. Try to avoid it. Keep everything tight. Keep that movement pure. Up, five. I'm gonna do 10 on this side too. Six, seven, eight, nine, and Once you're done with those hydrants, we're gonna drop into the frog. So, stretching that groin, I'm gonna drop my knees as wide as I can. Feet are gonna be pointed out, and I'm gonna kinda of just rock back and forth. I'm gonna rock back until I find that tight spot with my hips, and then I'm gonna just take a breath and then come out. Then I'm gonna rock back, take a breath, come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go five breaths, back and forth, coming back in, taking a breath here. So you're just allowing those adductors to stretch and relax, not forcing them to do anything. Just moving back and forth, one more. Wow, that is, that is a good one. So you're gonna come back up, bring your knees towards each other. Then we're gonna get into the pigeon. So I'm gonna be in a high plank. I'm gonna drop my knee in between my uh, hands here. My high hip, I'm gonna rotate down so I can get that stretch. Then I'm just gonna breathe. So some of us can put the knee all the way to the chest. I can't, so I'm just breathing here. Hmm. Just breathing. I'm gonna take five breaths. Let that belly fill up with air that helps relax the hips just a little bit. You're able to get more of a stretch out of it. One more big breath and then we're gonna switch sides. Whew. Out, in, lock out that back leg, breathe. So I'm here. This hip is a little tighter for me. 
So I'm really focused on trying to, trying to drop it down. I'm also trying to pull my knee to my chest as I do this. So I'm really emphasizing that hip flexion that's happening. Breathing into the belly, trying to get the most out of it. One more big breath. Coming up and out. Woohoo! So I'm here. I'm going to do a little cat cow. I'm going to inhale, look up at the sky. Exhale, tuck my chin to my chest, pushing through my pinky so that spine really gets rounded. Inhale, look at the sky. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, look at the sky. Exhale, chin to chest. Exhale. So I'm letting that breath match my spine's movements. Tucking that pelvis, helping us out. Hmm. One more. Exhale, pushing through the pinkies, separating the shoulder blades. Inhale. All right. So I'm on my knees. I'm pushing my knees apart, squeezing my glutes, creating a pillar, meaning my back is a little bit more flat than it normally is. I'm going to stretch out my arms, try to touch my knuckles to the sides of, the, of each wall in my living room here. Pushing out. I'm going to rotate. So I'm stretching that bicep, keeping the elbows locked. So the movement needs to come from the shoulder, the scapula. Feeling some snap, crackle, pop here. We're going to go small circles the other direction just to change it up. Yeah, let that scapula move a little bit. Still pushing away, getting those knuckles to push further and further away, stretching that skin, fascia, muscle, and the bicep, getting everything going. And then we're going to bring those thumbs down, push the thumbs to the floor, and I'm going to create some shoulder circles or some neck circles rather from my chin. So I'm going to draw circles counterclockwise or clockwise. I'm not trying to force my neck to do anything. I'm going to reverse those circles. Again, pushing those shoulders down to the ground, knuckles down to the ground. Huh. This is a lot for my neck. My neck is not very flexible. This feels really good this morning. Ha ha. OK, shake it out. We're going to do some um, shoulder circles from the half kneeling position. So I'm going to make sure my knee is nice and protected. Now here, we're going to go slow. I'm flattening out the spine by pushing hard down through the lead leg and through the back leg. So now my pelvis is on, abs are on. What I'm doing is I'm going to let my shoulder articulate through a complete circle. When I'm reaching out, my rib cage is staying down. I'm going to let that shoulder glide out of its socket. And then I'm going to continue to let it just stretch Especially as I go overhead, I'm going to continue to maximize the reach and range of motion here, keeping that rib cage down, letting that shoulder shrug up as my ribs come down, still breathing. I'm going to start to rotate that arm, not at the wrist, at the arm like a rotisserie chicken. It's going to rotate, and everything is going to be pushed back behind me as so that humerus rotates back. My palm begins to face the ceiling right down here. Everything's gliding away from my shoulders, gliding away from my ear, getting long, coming all the way down to neutral. And then I'm going to go exactly backwards. So I'm going to push it all the way back, all the way back. And then once I get there, I'm going to rotate, rotate, 
rotate up, forward, go, go. Nice. It's a good stretch for the hip. Really great work for the neck and shoulder. I'm going to switch sides. Again, shoelaces into the ground on the backside. Lead, lead foot's pushing into the floor. Stretching. Then I'm going to reach, 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 all the way up here. When I get to the sky, I'm dropping that rib cage still. Everything's on in the core. I'm going to rotate that humerus all the way back. Nice and slow, not in a hurry. Bringing that shoulder away from the ear. Elbows locked, coming back down, palm facing behind me. Then I'm going to drop down into neutral. I'm going to reverse it immediately. Come right back the way I came. Back, rotating out. Bringing that bicep up by the ear here. All the way out. Reaching, reaching, boom. That is fun. That's fun when you go slow. So, get back onto the ground here. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, hip mobility and abs, so I'm gonna be on the floor. I'm gonna be in this four point position that you can see. My knees are gonna come up off. The, off the deck, and I'm just going to touch inside of my foot by rotating the foot. I'm going to rotate that knee out and twist that foot in. My hip isn't going to go anywhere though, so I'm not going to let my hip rise and fall. I'm just going to touch the inside of my shoe. Try not to move. I'm going to touch five times on the right, five times on the left, just mobilizing that hip. Waking up those abs, arms, shoulders, five per side. Nice and smooth, nice and slow. Yeah. Whew. The uh, next exercise, we're gonna do a, uh, a, a bit of a downward dog. I'm not much of a yoga person, so there's gonna be those of you who are really good at this. We're starting the plank. My feet are gonna be a little bit wider, and then I'm gonna kick my hips up in the air. My biceps are, my elbows are gonna twist in towards my, fit, or my ears, so now I'm really externally rotated. I'm gonna pump my heels to the floor, trying to stretch my calves, really mobilizing those ankles. And then I'm going to drop down, inhale, look up at the sky, exhale, push my butt back up into the air. I'm going to pump again, continue to pedal, trying to get those heels to the floor. Just for a moment or two here, not for long. And then inhale, look up at the sky. And then back up into the plank and then set down onto the floor. I'm stretching out those calves, getting their shoulders going. Speaking of shoulders, let's do some more damage. We're going to do some I's, W's, Y's, and T's. And the I is probably my favorite because it does so much for your posture and your triceps. So I'm going to get into this ski jumper position, the hinge, butt back, chest up, elbows are going to be in tight next to my waist, palms to the ceiling, and then I'm going to reach overhead, palms facing the floor. So I'm just going to stay in this I formation. I'm just going to do five slow reps. Palms facing behind me, palms facing the floor when I'm overhead, everything's staying in nice and tight. Shoulder blades come down and back. 
You come up and forward. So I'm letting everything move where it needs to go. Feeling really good about this. And then we're gonna go into the Y. So I'm going overhead again, but I'm gonna chop my knee. I'm reaching out at a 45 with the palms facing in. So touching my knee, out at a 45, palms facing in, and that back flat. So I'm here. When you do this properly, you're really getting that mid trap, your trapezius two fibers. They do a lot of good for your shoulder. We're just gonna do five reps here. Not a ton. Just training your posture, training your shoulders. I'm gonna go right in the W. So I'm here, I'm elevating my elbow and my wrist at the same time. Gently squeezing the shoulders at the top. Nice little W formation. And then finally, we're gonna drop into the T. So we're here. Five reps, squeezing the shoulder blades together, arms straight out, getting that five in. Ah, nice. Now my upper back, lower back, legs are awake, getting, getting all fired up. So we're gonna do some archers. So here on the ground. And this time we're gonna do some, some holds. So I'm gonna draw back, my knees are stacked, my left, left leg's on the ground, left arm's on the ground. I'm going to inhale and I'm gonna try and touch this right hand or the high hand. As I inhale, I'm gonna try and touch the ground behind me. And I might not be able to do that. You might be able to do that. I'm gonna exhale, come back. So this time you're just trying to touch the ground behind you. If you can set your shoulders on the ground, that's wonderful. A lot of us won't be able to do it without moving our knees. But I'm going to work on it. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. Over to the other side. Oh, this is good for the chest. This is good for the, the pecs, the thoracic spine. Those muscles that like to hold the shoulder hostage. Loosen them up, inhale. Out. Again, I'm just trying to touch my, in this case, my left hand to the floor behind me. Oh, very challenging. Two. Three. Four. And five. So, moving through the archer. Oh, man. Oh, I should have stayed on the ground. Back to the, uh, <laughs> the bread salt. So we're in that position that we were started in. We're lying on our left side. I'm gonna grab the, the ankle, uh, the left ankle with the right hand, the right leg with my left hand. And so my, my whole goal with the bretzel is to drop my high shoulder to the floor behind me. So when you do this, you can feel it in your hip, your upper back, your chest, and again, we're not going to force anything. We're just going to let, let your body stretch into that position. I'm going to take five breaths here. Woo wee. <sighs> One more breath. Yeah, yeah. Ow. That is liberating. All right. On my right side, 
grabbing my right ankle with my left hand, left ankle with my right hand, dropping into that pretzel stretch. Whew. Five breaths here. Take that high shoulder, try to set it on the ground. Oh yeah. So you're taking two more breaths. All right. It's time to get off the ground. We'll do some uh, squat stretches here. So I'm going to do a, uh, a squat stretch with hamstring bias. Shoulders are about, uh, or heels are about shoulder width apart. I'm going to drop down into the squat. I'm going to grip the inside of my shoes with my fingertips. Keep my chest up. I'm going to rotate up. Inhale as I reach. Inhale as I reach to the other side. And then I'm going to tuck my chin to my chest. Exhale as I stand up. Keeping those, trying to lock out those legs, that's one. Inhale as I reach up. Inhale as I reach up. Exhale as I stand up. That's two. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. So you're allowing that breath to support you as you reach up with your hands. And then as you stand up, you're going to exhale and try to relax that neck and upper back, keeping everything bent, trying to stretch those hamstrings. Let's do one more. Chin to chest. Exhale. Yes. Ha ha. All right. And then last but definitely not least, we'll do some lateral lunge stretches. We're going to double wide here. We're going to take our hands, drop them down on the inside of our ankles, walk all the way out, all the way back into the opposing side. I'm going to reach up to the sky, following my hand with my eyes. So we're just going to go back and forth here for a few reps. Again, making sure that the, the hand comes in alignment with the heel of the foot that you're trying to reach for. So I'm getting everything, my shin, forearm, in alignment. And then when I reach up to the sky, I'm following my hand with my eyes so that my T-spine stays engaged and my cervical spine moves with my thoracic spine. Oh yeah, spinal terminology, so much fun. So I'm going through this. I'm gonna go through one more rep on each side. Bam. Ha. Woo -hoo -hoo. Hips are popping inside and out. I'm gonna grab some water. Get started with our speed circuit, our speed strength circuit, but if you did nothing else today, but you got that, you got that warm up done, your hips are gonna be so happy with you because they've been sitting in a lot of cases a lot more than they ever have been before. And they, you gotta have some medicine. You gotta, have, you gotta make them break up and do the things that they um, aren't allowed to do. So for our speed strength circuit, you're gonna need Paralyte dumbbells or a kettlebell. I'm gonna demo with a kettlebell. We're gonna do five exercises. And the goal is to go through this pattern these patterns as quickly as you can. So 
I want you to do, we're going to do 10 reps of everything. And we'll start off with a, a kettlebell swing. So uh, a kettlebell swing with your butt back, chest up. You're going to pitch it behind you. Fire out the hips. Explode through the glutes. And you're going to do 10 reps. If you don't have a kettlebell, then um, as you go through this warm up, what you'll do is you'll have a dumbbell or nothing and you're going to do a, a deadlift just quickly. So if you have a dumbbell, you can do a dumbbell deadlift where you're going to hold it lengthways just at the, at the one head. You'll just sp speed out some deadlifts. But the, uh, that, that will be our first exercise, the swing. And then we're going to do a high pull. So you've got your kettlebell in your hands. You're going to elevate. The elbow will lead the wrist. You're going to touch the chest with that kettlebell. And you're going to do 10 reps. You don't have to go lightning fast right now, but remember, it is speed strength, so the quicker the better when we get going into our circuit. So you're going to do 10 reps now just to warm it up, get everything ready. When you're done with your high pulls, you're going to go into your push press. So I'm going to grip my kettlebell, and I'm going to explode through the feet, explode through the hips, and really speed into that overhead position. So I'm here, I'm using my legs, I'm letting that bicep come by my ears. I'm going to do 10 reps, nice and quick, nice and easy, nice and smooth. So a push press is simply a uh, overhead press with a little bit of leg assistance from this hinge power position where I'm going to really pop through the hip. So once you're done with that, then you're going to do a single arm row. So I'm going to do 10 reps just with the one arm. So I'm here and I'm going to row. I'm going to let that humerus come up the same height as my rib cage. So it's going to meet my upper back. I'm squeezing my shoulder together. Nothing else is moving though. So I'm not doing a lot of rotating. I'm going to do 10 reps with the one side and then I'm going to do 10 reps with the other. If you have dumbbells, you'll do the exact same thing with, the, with your dumbbell. If you have nothing, you're just going to follow along with your, without weight, where you can grab your cat, if you have an Ushi around, or something like that. 10 reps. And the last thing you're gonna do is a, uh, a shoulder stability exercise called the kettlebell halo. So I'm going to circle the kettlebell around my head, elbows lifting and dropping, elbows lifting and dropping. If you do not have a kettlebell, I'll show you what you're gonna do. But for our halo people, we're gonna do 10 clockwise, 10 counterclockwise. So you're gonna go both directions, squeezing the glutes, staying strong, and then if you have no uh, kettlebell, you're just going to do a lateral fly or a lateral raise, meaning you're going to lift out, going to be at ear height with your dumbbells, and you're going to go as quickly as you can. So we're doing 10 reps of everything. In the case of the halo and the single arm, we're going to go 10 each side, and then we're going to rest. So we're going to do four sets. You're going to go through in order as quickly as you can. Swings, high pull, push press, single arm row, and the halo. And then you're going to rest for about 60 seconds, enough to rest for you to feel powerful and strong. And you're going to do it again. You're going to do it again quickly. It's more important that you have good form than you go fast. So form comes before speed, and speed comes before weight. So even if you have you know, all the kettlebells in the world and all the dumbbells in the world, we're not trying to earn any prizes for our, our, uh, our weight today. We just want to be fast, powerful, um, and crisp and precise with our movements. Okay, I will be moving at my own pace. Um, I'm gonna try and pick, it up, pick up the speed as I go. So if you wanna follow along with me, I'll be going moderately fast, then faster, then faster. And we will start in three, two, one, go. All right, we're rolling. Swings, boom. 
two, three, four, five. Opening up that jar with my kettlebell swing, keeping the lats involved. Ten. Boom. High pull. One. Leading with the elbows. If the elbows can't stay above the wrist, you're going too high. Pulling it into your chest at the top. Five. Six. Seven. Making it look good. Form before anything. One. Push press. Using those legs. Not trying to be a strong man here. Trying to use good form, good technique. Single arm rows after the push press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the halo. Last but not least, three, four, five, six, seven, ten each direction. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, one round down. So I'm resting, hydrating, getting my liters of water. Not my liters of cola, but my liters of water. So that was a good warm up. So I like to use the first round of any, any circuit as like a practice round. Even though I get a practice round, do the demo. I like to have another practice round. So this one I'm gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna try and be a little bit more fierce. When you're doing your, your swings, if you're doing those kettlebell swings, make sure to incorporate the lat. You do that by taking your grip and you, you, you rotate at the shoulder to pull those handles apart. You engage more lat, keeping the abs engaged the whole time. It'll help you be strong and powerful, but mostly it'll help you be fast. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and again, set two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four. Elbows lead on those high poles. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going up overhead. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Overhead press. Eight, nine, ten. Rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Halo. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. Keep your glutes on when you go overhead. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, second round down. Woohoo! So, depending on the size of your dumbbells, the size of your kettlebells, that is going to dramatically dictate how challenging your circuit is. So, if you only have a 35 pound kettlebell, you might want to shave some reps off. And if you only have a five pound dumbbell, or something like that, then you might be able to get an extra set in. You might be able to go a little bit more faster than some of us. That's okay too. <sighs> <clears throat> a 
Coming up on my third set, I'm gonna rest another 10 seconds. I'm gonna keep being, keeping at the one minute rest mark so that everything stays consistent and good. I'm gonna be powerful in my swing. And I'm off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Overhead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Halo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Yes. Looking good, Bob. Looking good, Belle. Looking good, Heather. Steve, relax your face. You look like you're dying. Reba, looking good. All right. So I've got one more round. And the reason why we only do a finite amount of speed strength reps is because we want to be powerful. So it's not an endurance test. We are trying to increase the rate of force production. And once those neurotransmitters are burnt, they're burnt. If you start to train slower, you just train yourself to be slower. And we don't want that. So train fast to get fast. That's why we only do a finite amount of reps in our speed strength day. This will be our fourth round, or my fourth round of training. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it about 10 more seconds and then I'm gonna burn it up for my last set. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. Three, two, one, and we're off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha ha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Overhead press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Rose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Halo. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Oh yeah! So, we are, 
We are finished with our speed strength. We've got one final piece of dessert to eat. We're crushing out our 20 squats, our 10 knee grabs, and our 20 swimmers. So squat, we already practiced this earlier. We're here, heels shoulder width apart. I'm gonna drop down, drive your hips forward. Two, three, four, five, going for 20. Pressure on the outside of the foot, driving the glutes forward. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So, firing up those legs, keeping everything tight. Going into the knee grab. So I'm on my back. So I'm here and I'm throwing my knee or throwing my hands forward, gripping my shins. Shoulder blades touch the ground, that's one. Throwing my hands forward, gripping my shins. Shoulder blades touch the ground. Your head doesn't need to touch the ground. Just tap in with your shoulder blades. Everything is working together. Six, seven, just gonna do 10. Nine, counts on the way down, boom, that was 10. All right, and then finally, we're doing our swimmer, we're on the ground, dropping down. Again, eyes 12 inches in front of me, so I'm really focused on posture, crown of the head's tall, pulling the elbow into the side. Fingertips are spread. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna do 20 reps here, not touching the ground. Getting those hands all the way in, Josh. Come on. Really working. Those shoulders are gonna glide where they need to glide, as long as you don't touch the ground. Pushing the shoelaces into the floor. 16, 17. 18, 19, ha ha. ha. Ending on a beautiful note. Familia, coming together, unconditional positive regard. You don't have to be a hero by pulling kids out of the water to save the day. Sometimes it's just texting your friend and saying, hey, I was thinking about you and I know that you're out of toilet paper and I have three rolls left. You know, it's that kind of a sharing it, sharing this, uh, the moment with someone else, thinking about somebody, thinking about many people besides yourself, and that's where kindness wins, and uh, it makes you feel better and everybody else feel better. So hopefully this, uh, this training session made you a stronger familia member and is going to help you bring forth the warrior within. Yeah, it was, it was a good workout, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was great. It was just the right amount of suck. <laughs>